That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Leave your comments below. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the trade for this week. And this is, of course, not a trade. This is a collection. I'm going to keep doing this because it's a good workout, really. It gets the, the shoulder muscles moving. Uh, yes, so we're going to be talking about the Boondocks, A Right to be Hostile. This is the Boondocks Treasury, a collection of a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Boondocks comic strips. And just, damn, this is good. So the Boondocks ran from 1999 to 2003-2004. Um, and then in 2005 is when we got the first season of the show. And yeah, so how could a daily newspaper strip that ran once again from 1999 to 2003 be relevant in 2016? And while there are certainly strips that refer to cultural events that no longer really matter or or don't really I don't even remember to be honest I don't even know what Puff Daddy got arrested for and it's that old they call him Puff Daddy I don't even know what Puff Daddy got arrested for I really don't I just didn't care at that time I was too young to give a fuck um nor did I listen to his music anyway so I don't know what he got arrested for there's like three or four strips that deal with him being arrested for something and they don't feel the need to explain it so yeah, there are some strips that are really dated, don't really have anything to do with what's going on anymore. Not as many as there should be. Steve and I did a Geeky Gentleman a couple months ago, or not, not just, just last month, July 4th uh, was when it was posted, on the albums American Idiot and An American Prayer, and we talked for quite a while about American Idiot and how... Like, its biggest problem is that it wasn't very timeless, that, like, it, it stopped really mattering once we got out of the Bush presidency. And boy, did it used to seem that way. But the whole point we made with that album is it's just as relevant, maybe even more so today. And I guess anytime the far right is in power, it'll be more relevant. And that's terrifying. Pi far right, not even in power, just in prominence, it'll be more relevant. Exactly what uh, is going on with this book. The, all the political stuff, the vast majority of political stuff, is still completely applicable. It all still reads just the same. Nothing about the, the politics in this feel dated or unnuanced because we've come so far. There are just random strips in here that I read and I'm like, wow. Okay then, here's a good one. Um, for those that don't know, Alan Keyes was a man running for president. In 1999, he was a black man running in the conservative Republican Party. And he said a lot of stupid things like, oh, I don't believe in uh, affirmative action and all this other crap. So here's a strip. We've got a news... The boys or granddad aren't even in this. It's just news reporter and people she's interviewing. So as we continue our look at the Alan Keyes campaign, we return to New Hampshire where we asked Republicans to give their impressions of the man. First woman, well, I thought he was great. I'm very pro-life and I just think he had so many wonderful ideas. Really? Did you vote for him? Vote for Keyes? Oh my goodness, no. I mean, I liked him and everything, but I'm a Republican and, he, and he's, well, you know. Next old man, Alan Keyes, fine man, good conservative views, wish we had more like him, pro-military, pro-guns, that's what I look for in a president. Hmm, interesting, did you vote for him? No, oh ma'am, fine man, I'm sure, but how would I explain that to my grandkids? Final man, Keyes, 
Hey, he's against affirmative action and so am I. I'm tired of these quotas for blacks. I applaud him, definitely. I see, so did you vote for him? Yeah, right, lady. Him plaid monkeys fly right out of my derriere and break dance. What, are you new to politics? That's all from New Hampshire. Back to you, Bob. This is the Republican Party, not the Urban League. Oh, how things have changed. What with their protest signs against the uh, the man who th isn't their president. <laughs> I think I skipped a really good one, too. It was with Tom and Huey. And then there are issues that about diversity that are, are often addressed in this that um, that deal with with how people interpret things and and once again still very relevant. Here's Tom and Huey talking. Listen, and this is about Jasmine, Huey's next door neighbor, Tom's daughter who is of mixed race. Listen, Huey, you have to try to understand how sensitive Jasmine is about her hair. She sees her mom's hair, and she doesn't understand why her hair doesn't look the same way. My wife doesn't have a clue what to do with it, and neither do I. Meanwhile, we've tried everything to straighten it. Every hair relaxer ever made, nothing works. Have you tried emphasizing the natural beauty of her African features? Or how about lie, you know, burn her hair straight, like the old days. That might work. Once again, diversity is not about fitting in with the rest. Diversity is about accepting um, others into the group, about not being exclusionary. That's a very relevant strip to this till this day. Uh, great, great strip. And then there's just other stuff that are about systematic problems. I know systematic problems. I fucking liberal, whatever. Um, Okay, there's... Let's let's just take a random one where Huey gets to meet his teacher. Huey, this is Mr. Petto, your new teacher. Uh, nice to meet you, Huey. Mr. Petto, public ed education facilities such as this are the, are the cornerstone of institutionalized racism that continues to oppress black people. Not only will I refuse to succumb to your brainwashing, I will dedicate myself to the eventual elimination of this abomination to the high pursuit of learning. I quit effective immediately. Nonsense. Looks like it's going to be a great year. Have fun, boys. <gasps> yeah, just Huey dealt with all the, um... Huey dealing with the, the way the American school system is set up to, to brainwash people as opposed to, um, to make them learn. School start... Uh, Huey and Granddad. School starts in a couple weeks, Huey. Excited? What? Hold up. I thought we agreed that I would be homeschooled. We never talked about that. Yes, we did. Remember I was explaining to you the white man's conspiracy to brainwash me with his Eurocentrism? Oh, maybe we did talk about it. I have a tendency to tune you out whenever you say the words the white man's conspiracy. See, Grantad, I need homeschooling. There's, no, there's so much that I want to learn that no American school will ever teach me. Like what? Like how to overthrow an imperialist capitalist regime and replace it with a socialist system which recognizes and protects the collective good against personal avarice. And I'm supposed to teach you that? Hey, I know you used to be radical. I've seen pictures. You owned one dashiki 30 years ago and nobody lets you forget it. Again, I'm just having fun reading this stuff. It's, it's just so amazing how, how much Magruder tapped into something very, very um, potent that, that we're still dealing with. But this is this idea that, oh, we've moved past that, we're beyond this now, and, and we're really not. It's These are still problems. I really, really like this one. I might get this like printed out or cut this out of the book even. Here's Huey getting ready for um, to go to school, and he's got his world history textbook in every... And, and on the table in front of him in every single one of these panels. Let's see, you gotta make sure I got everything for school. I have the ISIS papers by Dr. Welsing. I've got my autobiography of Angela Davis. I've got my Wretched of the Earth. 
I've got Behold a Pale Horse, I've got How White Whitey done messed everything up, I've got my new copy of Every President Lies to Black Folks. It just seems like I'm forgetting something. Oh well, probably wasn't that important anyway. Again, this Huey in class, same page. Huey, could you start reading at the top of page 46, please? All right. So once you comprehend the threat an educated black man poses to the global system of white supremacy, you can understand why the educational system as an institution is designed to suppress and even annihilate the mental evaluation of the mental elevation of the African child. Thank you. Now will someone please read from page 46 in our textbook? Well, next time be specific. I can't read minds. <laughs> oh, Huey's the best. I loved the show. It was just way too bad that um, that they started focusing less and less on Huey as the show went on. It was so good, but damn. I loved it when Huey was, was the one they were focusing on. Mm. There's also some clever uses of just the way he did the strip. Um, let's see if I can find something. Like there's pretty famously he used um, flaggy and ribbon and I'll, I'll read some of those panels too. But I'm just trying to see if I can find some of the um, the more like direct uses of of being really clever with how he used the strip. Um, it's hard to find. There we go. So let's look at this top panel here. You can see that a conversation is happening. It's just you can't tell what they're saying except for the first few words. Well, I don't understand. It's simple. The man doesn't. Well, they can just kiss. And then we have censored. The, this comic contains numerous references to the DECSS code uh, used to bypass the content scrambling system of DVDs, which by order of Judge Louis Kaplan is illegal to reproduce in any way. We apologize for the inconvenience, but speech that damages the profits of our corporate friends is not protected by the First Amendment. Thank you. Next panel down below. Mr. Petal, I have a question. Yes. Why is it perfectly legal to post a diagram of how to build a bomb on the net, but you can't post a code that discrambles DVDs? Censored. We just don't like where he's going with this. There's a lot of stuff just like about the way that... Um, you know, things that are inherently corporate but are supposed to do to serve a um, more moral purpose are very corruptible. Um, and as someone that works at a television news station, you can bet your ass that's still a problem. Uh, just, just in the day-to-day, -day, like we have... Um, we have news episodes where we go on after like a baseball or football game. And since those can go long, we have to cut certain things out of the show because, you know, we, we need to fill until this certain time. And that's fine. That's understandable. You got to work within the, the scheduling. But what we're supposed to cut and what we're supposed to keep is really, really iffy because there's a sponsored section that's just like, you know, basically a, a health story. It just tells you some basic tips about health. And we're not supposed to, f to get rid of that. Even if we have things related to business, the economy, other, you know, hard news, that would be more important. We're not supposed to get rid of the health because the health is sponsored. The health, the health stuff, the story has, um, you know corporate sponsorship behind it whereas the other stories even though they might be more important even though there might be more of a journalistic need to show them aren't so just in the day-to-day -day, there's corruption and in corruption in service of money and you're just the the reporters the the show producers are mandated to follow that and so this idea of of things like him him playing with the idea 
of being censored, just tiptoeing around it, poking fun out of it, is still 100% relevant today, and I'm amazed how much of this stuck. <sighs> mm. And there's a lot of talk about just black culture, and, and the thing that people say about Boondocks is, oh, it's only for black people. And it's really not. It's, um, it's definitely applies to black people more than any other group, but anyone from any minority group can easily identify with a lot of what's going on in this. Um, and that's really, really fascinating, is that you can... You can still pick up um, what he's doing. You can still, like, even though you may not be black, or even if you're not a minority, just if you I, if you understand um, the problems that he's addressing, the just ideas of like anti-intellectualism. Um, there's a lot in this for you, so that's really interesting. Uh, now we have some strips from post 9/11. And if you remember, in a post-9-11 world, you couldn't criticize the government for doing anything. You couldn't criticize anything anymore because, oh, well, you know, we've been attacked. And so the boondocks actually came up under a lot of heat for not standing with the president. Editors note, the boondocks is being replaced this week with the adventures of flagging ribbon, a hilarious patriot a hilariously patriotic new offering. Why do people do bad things to America, Flaggy? Because they hate our freedoms, Ribbon. They hate our right to privacy. They hate our right to free speech. Editor's note continued. Those of you who have written demanding the return of the boondocks, your names have been forwarded to the FBI. For the select few who are not daily readers of the comics, the Boondocks has been indefinitely replaced by the uproarious fun of, of the adventures of Flaggy and Ribbon. Hey Flaggy, I heard someone on the radio say that if we kill innocent people, we're no better than the terrorists. That's left-wing, radical hippie, communist thinking, Ribbon. You talk like that again, I'll have to drag you out into the street and shoot you myself. Yes, Flaggy. There is no... All Americans, as part of the efforts to support national unity, we are tempor temporarily replacing the boondocks with the adventures of Flaggy and Ribbon. Today, Flaggy and his trusty sidekick, Ribbon, tackle the issue of what can I do? Hey, Flaggy, I've been wondering, what can I do to fight ter terrorism? Well, Ribbon, an important part of fighting terrorism is supporting the economy. Go out and spend some money. Kids, what better way to spend that money than on an official Flaggy and Ribbon Osama Bin Laden is a punk t-shirt? Tell Bin Laden what a punk he is. Just nineteen ninety five plus four ninety five shipping and handling. Order today. Operators are standing by. Some of the money will go to help out charity or something. Editor's note: Despite the tremendous reader response to the adventures of Flagging Ribbon, we have decided to bring back the Boondocks on a probationary basis. However, should the material be deemed inappropriate, we are prepared to bring back Flagging the Ribbon at a moment's notice. United we stand. Mr. Petto, how come nobody is talking about the ways that Bush's big oil compadres will? benefit from this war on terrorism. Hey, Flaggy, can we sing the Star Spangled Banner again? Banner again? Of course, Ribbon, it's our national anthem. So once again, really playing with what you can do with a comic strip. Um, and that's really fun. I'm going to see if I can find the strip that probably made me laugh the hardest. It's Huey calling the FBI's terrorist tip line. Did I pass it? I see Huey on the phone. Did I miss it? I know, watching me flip through a comic book might just be the most fascinating part of this show. I hope you don't mind. I just really like so many of the strips here, and I think the best, they're so short and so complete that I think the best way to talk about the book is to just talk about, hey, you remember this? Um, Huey calls the terrorism's 
the FBI is terrorism tip one. I'm very serious. I know of several Americans who have helped train and finance Osama bin Laden. And how did you come by this information? A little investigating. It wasn't that hard, actually. Okay, give me some names. All right, let's see here. The first one is Reagan. That's R-E-A-G. Hello? Hello? Huey squeals to the Fed's terrorism hotline. Why do you keep hanging up on me? I'm telling the truth. The CIA, the CIA trained Osama bin Laden in using terrorism against the Soviets during the Reagan-Bush administration. They gave the Afghanistan rebels countless amounts of court, covert funding. Don't you have better things to be doing? Better than fighting terrorism? Heck no, we're at war! Huey helps the FBI wage war on terrorism. Wait, before you hang up, I have one more important tip. G.W. Bush gave the Taliban government $43 million this May. This May! How much of that money will be spent on weaponry that will be used against U.S. soldiers? Well, I didn't know that. He lives at 1600 Pennsylvania. Hey, are you writing this down? I suggest bringing really tight handcuffs. Didn't know that? Did you? Educational. Still pretty damn relevant. I highly suggest reading the boondocks. I wonder if their website's still up and running. I'm pretty sure you can just read all of them on the web website. I'm um, really glad I bought this. I got this for like four bucks too on Amazon, so that was a good ass deal. Um, but like as as poignant and as as pointed as some of these um, stories are. There are still moments of levity that are just a lot of fun, and it, it knows how to take itself not too seriously. It knows how to just tell a good joke, be funny, and it doesn't even have to have anything to do with with the race or the politics or whatever um, else is the hot topic of the week. I'm trying to find the one that I really, really enjoyed. Um, not everyone's going to get it, but... Just think peanuts. Where's it at? Missed it. It's one of the colored strips too. The colored strips are really cool actually. I don't like how the colored strips are placed in the collection though. Um, that does bother me. Just because I feel like they, um, they kind of break up the flow of a lot of the story, even though they're not uh, always related or, or often aren't related to the rest of the story. Because, like, the, the colored the, the strips go day by day. They're the dailies. But the colored strips seem to be, like, maybe every month's worth of stories. So they kind of, like, skip um, entire days. Or entire story arcs or, or skip over and, and start addressing something that we've already gone over. Um, damn, I can't find this stupid strip. Oh, here we go. So we got Huey reading a newspaper. Here's a sound out the window. Sighs because Huey sighs often. And he walks out there, sees their neighbor Cindy with a football. She says, hi, Huey. He says, sigh. Riley is lying on the ground, and Huey throws the newspaper on him as Riley's lying on the ground. But but how was I supposed to know she would read, dummy? Peanuts, you'll get the joke. So it just, it knows how to have a lot of fun from time to time. Here's another good one with um, just Caesar. I, I was so sad they never brought Caesar in the show. I loved Caesar. Here's a good one with Caesar and Riley. Hey, Caesar, I heard your mom's was Martin Lawrence's stunt double in Big Mama's house. Wow. Okay, okay. That's why your breath smells like Altoids in reverse. What? Okay, uh, well, that's why your, um, cousin, I mean your mom's, uh, punk. Brooklyn baby, well, what? Love it. Just love it. That's fun. Uh, they just, they just knows how to have fun. Just knows when to, um, kind of deviate from the political stuff and just, you know, give a good laugh here and there and just be clever, just enjoy itself. And that's, that's really fun to read too. Um, Huey really is the main focus of this. So that's great for someone who, who liked the boondocks, but 
always felt a little disappointed that they stopped focusing on Huey. Going back and reading the original strips is a lot of fun. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I can say about this, because as fun as it is, I would love to just sit here and read strips to you all day. Uh, I, I have a feeling that, you know, I'm just kind of giving you the book without you going out and just getting the book. Um, so I don't want to do that all day. And believe me, I didn't even read some of my favorites. This shit is hilarious. Really good book. Really good comic series. I really wish they'd bring it back. I don't think they ever will, but I really wish they'd bring it back. What can you do? Oh, well. That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book.